Hey guys, we'll try this again. I took it off of wireless because when the kids and I went live with, or yeah, Wi-Fi, um, the kids- We're just at the range of our router reach, so it bounces from cell to Wi-Fi and gives you crap signal. Anyway, hello, happy Thursday. Um, we thought we'd come out when it's not uh, 100 degrees. I think my band registered 100 degrees and give you guys an update on our Cornish crosses If you didn't catch we actually skipped week two and went straight to week three, but when we hey Jariah um, We got some Cornish cross crosses and we are gonna try to raise um, some broiler chickens But week two is super boring if you didn't catch week one scroll back a little ways and um, Basically, we gave you the rundown of we had a baby pool set up um, they were teeny tiny cute little furry things. We talked a little bit about that. Week two was super boring. Um, we just kept them water fed. We did switch and we'll, I'll show you when we go in the garage to a bigger feeder that had a central pole that sp freely spun so they could not roost on it. Um, some of them with their long, you know, padded feet figured out how to sit on it. But um, this week was exciting. Um, it was warmer. We have not needed the heat lamp. They almost have all of their feathers in. Um, so we're gonna show you what they look like. We upgraded to a bigger water and feeder. And uh, they're considered like probably two or three times the size that they were. Baby, you wanna pick one up? Um, and then we'll show you the tractor. So here they are, much bigger. You can see that most of their feathers are in. She's noisy. Um, except for their head and then parts of their butt are kind of bald, so that's funny. I'll turn it around here so you guys can see them. Here they are. So we moved them out to the tractor, like I said, because it's been warmer. Um, they can free range, and then every day we will kind of drag it around um, because as they get bigger, of course, they'll get messier. But that way they can have fresh grass. It actually fertilizes our yard, which is awesome. I just put down um, some new grass seed. And then Jason will talk a little bit. We upgraded from the long trough that you'll typically get at a tractor supply to this little contraption. So uh, Monday will mark the actual three week day and then that's when we'll switch to. Right now they've been on full feed, meaning just they can eat whenever. But uh, suggested for multiple people when you hit that three week mark, you'll give them feed for 12 hours, you'll take it away. So I'll take it away at night, give it back to them in the morning and that's just to keep them from getting too big too fast where they'll be like miserable and falling over dead. So I just took a five gallon bucket. Um, I drilled four holes in it, I don't know if you can really see it. So that just auto fills itself and I screwed it to this trough, I guess, so that they can reach it. And it's a rubber pan a rubber is what it is. Pan. Hopefully they can stay out of it so they're not pooping in their own food. Uh, supposedly this works really well. And then the water bucket's actually pretty simple. She comes over here. It's just a regular bucket that I got a, a hard plastic dog bowl or big horse bowl or whatever. And I drilled a hole in it below the surface so I can just fill the bucket, dump it in there. Supposedly... Uh, 25 birds would go through five gallons of water a day. Uh, we only have 15, so I don't need to fill it quite as full and hopefully it'll, I can make it, we'll figure out what they need for a day. So I'm only filling it once a day. There's also a difference between the pans. We chose this flexible pan with the food versus the hard pan with the water. The hard plastic will not be as pliable. Therefore, when we carry it around or dump it out, you know, rinse it out real good, um, they or it's just more resilient. Um, he just used a drill bit to drill a hole in the top of the bucket. Um, and so obviously physics, the water stops just where, because of where the hole is because of the pressure above the bucket. So pretty ingenious. Um, obviously you can buy, we have larger three gallon waters from the tractor supply store, but this was just more economical and a bit cheaper. And then, um, I know we have friends who have space in town or they live just outside of town. This tractor is not only good for your broiler chickens, but it also would be awesome if you wanted to free range and kind of drag it around your property. So I'll let him briefly describe the yeah. materials used for that. Yeah, and a side note. Um, I'm gonna switch. She said free range for like if you wanted egg layers. The difference with that is you'd need to give them a place to lay eggs and roost. Uh, these chickens, by the time they would get to like the roosting stage, they're gonna be butchered, so they don't need any roosting in here. If you're gonna use this for a regular chicken batch of the egg layers, 
you'll need to figure out some type of roosting pole, which makes it a little more interesting. And you could let them free range during the day, like drag it around during the day. And if you have a bigger coop where they can roost and lay their eggs, um, you know, at nighttime, bring them in or whatever. But I'll let him kind of explain the materials. I'll turn it around. So this is the tractor. Pretty I made simple. It, I made it uh, eight foot by five foot. And I made it two foot tall. Two foot tall was uh, just ideal for the hardware cloth. I didn't have to buy more than one. And that's this wire here. It's actually wire. I don't know why they call it hardware cloth. Um, if you live in predators, I would highly recommend hardware cloth over chicken wire. And I can speak from experience. Uh, even a raccoon can reach its hands through chicken wire. Yes, it can't pull the chicken out alive, but it will disassemble the chicken inside the fence and pull it out piece by piece. So hardware cloth, uh, it's twice to three times the expense of chicken wire, but it's well worth it. So I just used two by fours, ripped them down so it really doesn't take that much lumber. Uh, obviously put it on the end so I can raise it and access everything. And then I found some old uh, metal. I looked on Facebook, had some friends looking. Yep, and shout out to Natalie Wilms. Natalie Wilms, it's from an outbuilding, so uh, it's just scrap metal. I sorted through and picked the ones that didn't have holes. There are some questionable spots. I'm probably gonna have to seal up if I don't want water running in on them, but um, I'm not gonna drag it right now. But basically, just have it on a rope and you can see that it's relatively light. Like I said, I got the water and stuff in there, so I'm not gonna move it, but you can just drag it around so that they have fresh grass if you're gonna move it once You can a day. use any rope. I think this is some of his paracord that he uses when he hikes and stuff. And then just attach it with some washers. So every day we'll come out here and we will check the water and the food um, and then drag it along and they will get to the point just like you know any other animal when dogs, cats, when you get ready to feed them, they're gonna anticipate it as soon as you open that hatch. Um, and then they'll also get used to us kind of dragging it. So we're just gonna drag it. I mean, we've got not quite two acres that we'll kind of drag it along here on the backside where the kids don't play, of course. Um, and yeah, we'll just keep checking in. So the biggest thing this week was moving them outside. Um, like I said, they've got probably, I'd say, what'd you say, 80% of their feathers, if not more. Just the it's, heads and butts. Yeah. Fully covered. Um, but it's been so warm. Like it was almost hundred degrees today. And then at nighttime, it hasn't gotten below 60 degrees. Um, the biggest thing is when I've, I've read and done some research on the tractors is if you get rain, which that's why more than three quarters of it is covered, is if you get rain, their feathers get wet, they don't dry well, they can actually die of hypothermia. So if it does rain, we'll either transport them inside, drag it to a space of cover, if, or if put something get, they can roost on. If we get on. heavy rain, yeah. regular rain not a big deal, but if we get heavy rain that'll soak up, you either gotta put something down for them to get off of the rain, uh, or they could, like you said, they can get up with their man dive. They're so funny to watch, though, guys. It's really entertaining. If, you ever, if you've ever watched one before, they found the clovers, like the white or the pink clovers, and uh, they are fighting over a feather the other day, chasing each other. So they're a hoot, but they're doing amazing. We did lose one. Why did we lose it, babe? We have a very uh, loving child, three-year-old, who thinks that they are baby dolls, and she just squeezes them a little too hard. Well... See, mom was doing landscaping and she found uh, worms, an earthworm, and tried to hand feed the earthworm to the baby and she killed it. She smashed its face. <laughs> um, last thing we're going to show you real quick, I don't want to keep this super long, is we also showed you that two weeks ago we started having some broody mamas in our layers. Um, our goal, uh, ironically enough, I'll let Jason be the camera. Ironically enough, both of our golden laced hens are the ones that are broodiest. So, um, something that we do is I marked them two weeks ago. I really try to let nature take its course and let them sit on them. I don't like to mess with them, but I do like to candle them with a light just to see which ones are fertilized, which ones are not. Um, you can typically see if there's blood lining or a big area that's really red, then something has happened, the chick has passed. Um, you can also tell after a period of time, like two to three weeks, um, if it has stalled growing, meaning the air sac. You have your egg, there's an air sac on the bottom, the white, and then the yolk, which is a darker area. I'll show you a couple of them. Um, but we are getting close within this next like four to eight days. We should be having some hatch and then we'll let mama kind of um, sit with them for a while. But they will actually 
um, they can turn or other chickens might attack them. So we will separate them. So what's cool and different about, <laughs> which, which you can see that we're going to piss them off now, but yeah. Um, I'll actually do these. One mama, this is a golden lace. They're really pretty birds. I think you've probably seen them before. And then the other ones over here. Don't ask me why she's in the poop catcher tray. <laughs> but that is where she moves some eggs. And yeah, she refuses to sit on them anywhere else. So, so what's cool about... Um... She gets really pissed off when you take them in. I see you. What's neat, um, so in incubators, um, Let me shut this light off over here. you have to control the humidity and the temperature, but what's neat about chickens letting them do their thing is they will actually pluck the feathers out of their, you can kind of see, you have to shine the light. Their there. breast. See how she's bald on their belly? She's pulled feathers out. They will pluck their own feathers out so that they have basically skin to shell contact. They'll have, it's like ghost, time, ghost time story. They'll have skin to shell contact so they control the humidity for the chickens. I think it's like the coolest thing ever. So anyway, this was one of our first eggs. You can see the mark that I have on it. It's from the 11th. So we're coming up on this weekend anytime they're due. I marked the original air sac and then each week it kind of progresses as the embryo feeds off the nutrients. So then what's cool is you can candle it. Let's see if I can get the lighting here. Come over here for a second. A more dark. Yeah, a little darker. It's difficult to tell on the camera. Maybe zoom out a little bit. Zoom in. Maybe. But you can see the air sac here, right? And it's really difficult to tell on the camera. But there are some blood veins and you can see in here is the embryo. And it's not going to show it very well. It's not going to show it because it's blurring it out. Let me see if I can get a different one. There's a green one. Let's see if I can Yeah, our chickens are very, uh, why is my light on? Oh. Are very curious slash uh, they dislike change. Here's a better one. Let's see if I can. Let's see if this one works. See where it's it gets really dark in there. You can see the air sac is clear up here. It's really. And then by the time right before they hatch, it's almost like the whole egg is full. Right yep. Yeah. This is really hard to see through the camera. I apologize. It's but there's a difference between those. These are much further along versus. Let me grab a brand new. I think she had. She has the newer ones. Yeah. 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 Versus this one's still like mainly, not as much air sac and mainly yolk. So this one's a lot further behind. Well, you can see that. Still kind of hard to see on this, but, but yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Um, whoo, I'm sweating in here. Um, so yeah, so what we'll do is we'll keep checking again, like once the, um, let's come out here. It's hot. Um, once the, Chicks hatch, mom's breast, like I said, with the humidity and, and stuff, they'll fluff up over a period of a few hours. Look at the humidity. Fluff up like my hair. Um, I was just talking about <laughs> my hair's just fine. <laughs> uh, Lacey, way to go. I feel like we just keep building bird cages and breeding. Oh, that'd be quail. so fun to breed quail. Yeah, this is our first, ex first time doing broilers. We wanted to do it last year. We've had birds for... Five years, six years, or something. But, but what we've noticed already is they're really way more simpler. More simpler? That's not a word. They're more simple than uh, like egg layers because egg layers stay at that stupid, fragile stage for what seems like ever. Yep. And these uh, broilers, two and a half weeks, and we kick them outside. So. Yep. But um. But yeah. So we'll have them with Mama for a little while, and then we'll probably separate them and put it under a heating lamp. Ooh. Do I get to show my toy? Um. Oh, I was going to show you guys this was the other feeder. We have to clean it up for the chicks. but um, So we originally had the feeder that had the holes in it that you can get at Tractor Supply in our baby pool with our little water. But this is the one that kind of freely spins. 
and it's just a bigger tray because as they get bigger their heads won't fit through that hole so I want to say this was like four to six bucks at the tractor supply store or something and then Jason super proud so the other thing we were uh Talking budget we've, wise we've and stuff. We've heard from people that plucking chicken feathers sucks. by hand sucks, especially if you're doing like more than a dozen. And, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm kind of lazy when it comes to manual labor. If there's a way to get around not having to do it, I'm all about that. But I wasn't going to spend 700 bucks on a plucker, and I wasn't going to drop 50 bucks on plucking fingers that I still had to build a plucker for. So uh, I had basically everything else. I needed you to flip around if I want. Um, I had everything here with the exception of I didn't have a, enough of these bungees. So I sent Hannah to buy me a couple of them. And basically, I made my own. I, I did a little. I said this would work. I'm not going to turn it on for you now. But basically, I didn't know what I wanted to use for a motor. Uh, but if I got. Guys, this is like Redneck City. Hey, and it it, works. for those that know us, this is just comical because. I went to Menards on a solo trip, mind you, which was glorious. It's kind of like going to the grocery store without children, only you get to, like, look at everything you want to buy for your dream home. Like, our date nights are at Menards. Um, and I ended up spending, I think, 10 bucks was what I spent on some plastic bungees, and we already had everything else at the house to make this plucker. Um, mind you, if you have some sort of gear or something, but he rigged his belt sander I have, a, I have a belt up sander. to a platform so when you turn it on the, the fingers will I'll let him explain it so um, the hardest part was getting these stupid bungee that was a pain but anyways uh, I had an old bar I don't even know what this is from I think it's an old bat bar clamp that doesn't work and of course I always have wood laying around if you can see there's my canoe. But I have a belt sander that I don't necessarily use much anymore. It's still usable because I didn't destroy it. But I have a big belt sander that I got from my grandfather. But I took one of the long belts from that and I cut it in half so it would fit on this belt sander. Made a wooden gear. It's not tensioned right now because we're not going to use it for a while. But this would work. And then I built a wooden gear because this is actually ratioed to the right speed that I want for this to turn. So I didn't have to get any gears to gear it down from like a, a big motor. But anyways, it'll it'll just spin. And then you'll just we'll just hold the it. chicken and I can lock and it'll this. pluck the chicken after you scald it. This has a lock on so I can lock it on or we have a, a step foot pedal extension cord that I can shut it off if I want to control it by my foot. But um, if this works as well as everyone else says it works, then uh, So yeah, so these are plastic bungees, a four inch PVC pipe with some caps, and then he built himself a little platform. So <laughs> I don't know. Homemade chicken plucker. <laughs> it's a pretty simple process. It well, grabs the feathers and rubs them out. Yeah, so we'll see how it works. Um, we'll if probably record work, it. If it or doesn't I'll record work, him. I'm going to lie and tell you that it did anyways. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully these little projects get brave and want to do uh, chickens on your own. But it was a really simple, you know, kind of 3D rectangle. We did three quarters of it metal, and then the other part was hardware or wire. Hardware cloth. Hardware cloth. But it's what? It's metal wire. Um, but good luck finding it because most people are doing crafts now, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sold out. Actually, a lot of people are using hardware cloth with, um, they're making trays and putting it in the bottom, and then they're rinsing their vegetables off in it to catch all the dirt and everything like that, which is super clever too. But anyway, biggest thing this week. We moved the chickens outside. We're a little late on week two just because... Well, we had a busy week two. Yeah. But there was nothing new. Yep. So we made the chicken plucker, which is ahead of schedule by several weeks. Um, the layer hen chicks are getting close. We're probably within a week or so, and I'll, I'll probably go live or take some pictures and add them to my one album. But, uh, yeah, the adventure continues, and we will check in next week. Thanks for joining, guys. Good night.